We'll be looking at the subject, your mind and the supernatural. The community where my parents came from, there was this madman. Who said they should give him money to go to the village? They asked him a simple question. What is the distance between this place and your village? And he said, the distance sometimes is two miles, sometimes is three miles. I don't know if you understand. Sometimes is what? Sometimes is what? The question is, is the road getting longer and shorter? When a man's mental faculty is retarded, the man is disregarded. When a man's mental faculty is retarded, that man is disregarded. To be mentally retarded is to be discarded. To be mentally retarded is to be discarded. All the futures in a madman can be complete, but when his mind is absent, it becomes useless. That's why it's not even regarded as a statistical material in census. Your mind is very powerful. That's why the Japanese use the word yocha, yokangai. <laughs> it simply means good thinking, good product. Yocha, yokangai. Good thinking, good product. Bad thinking, bad product. Poor thinking, poor product. Mediocre thinking, mediocre product. Every man that will succeed on the surface of the heart must learn to upgrade his mind. Many of us, we upgrade our laptops, we upgrade our cars, we upgrade everything, but the most important thing we don't upgrade, which is our mind. We upgrade all the electronic gadgets. There are people that now, currently as I'm talking to you now, they are upgrading their cars from 1996 model to 2022 model. But their mind is still 1996 model. Many have failed in life because they have failed in their mind. You will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I say you will not fail in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the interesting thing is this. The devil is interested in your mind and God is also interested in your mind. They both are interested because nothing can enter your life without your mind. God said, come, let us reason together. Say the law. Do your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though the breasts are crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah 1, 18. Which means that God wants a change, but he cannot change your life until he changes your mind. Come, now, let us reason together. That will not change scarlet. Change your sin. Say, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. So crimson can never become wool until your mind changes. God cannot change your life until it changes your mind. Praise God. And this is one area we must take very, very important in the body of Christ. Our mind must be upgraded. Satan is interested in your mind. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the mind. See, he's interested in the mind too. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of those that believe not, lest the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ should shine unto them. So it's a mind blinder. The first thing it did to floor Eve was to show her something and then convince her in her mind. As a matter of fact, you can really not be born again until your mind is in order. Because it is your mind that gives you the conviction. Do I need to accept Jesus Christ? I think I need to accept Jesus Christ. Then your spirit will accept it. Then you will step forward. Do you understand what I'm saying? So your mind is very important. It is the pivot on which your body and your entire life gravitates. 
It's my prayer that God will give you understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Just like Adam was created and kept in the garden to replenish the earth, so every born again child of God is kept on earth to eternize the earth by making everywhere a place of delight. We have been kept here to eternize the earth. Eden simply means a place of delight. We have been kept to eternize the earth to make everywhere a place of delight. God's original intention was to take man, put him in the garden so that man cannot replenish the earth by turning everywhere to Eden. So we are supposed to Edenize the earth to make every place a place of delight. So when we meet things that are not working, we are supposed to create things to make them work. Behind every invention is a human face. Behind every invention is a human face. Behind every event is a human face. Every invention is invented. Every invention is invented. There is nothing you are seeing today that does not come from somebody. Whatever is worthwhile today came from somebody. I pray that everyone that is under the influence of this service will be a co-creator with God in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I said you will be a co-creator with God in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. When you commonize the good use of your mind, you devalue your life. When you commonize the good use of your mind, you devalue your life. When you commonize the value of your mind, you minimize your impact. I said, when you commonize the good use of your mind, you devalue your life. When you commonize the value of your mind, you minimize your impact. One of the key attributes of a supernatural mind is what we call creativity and innovation. One of the key attributes, the major attributes of a supernatural mind is creativity and innovation. This book started with God. And started with creativity. This book called the Bible. Started with God and started with creativity. In the beginning, God created. The first way God was introduced in scripture is introduced through the nature of creativity. In the beginning, God created. The heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So God was first introduced in scripture as the master creator. That was the first attribute of God, known to us in scripture from Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. So every Christian must be a creator. The Bible says, be ye followers of God as his dear children. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Be ye followers of God as his dear children. So we are supposed to be co-creators with God. If a Christian is stranded, it is an anomaly, an anathema. According to Patrick O'Bayagbon, it's a pitiable bisma disma. For a Christian to be stranded with brain complete, sometimes even with big head. And a Christian is stranded and an unbeliever is going forward, then something is wrong somewhere. Now, as Christians, we need to challenge ourselves. If people with ordinary minds can do extraordinary things, how much more you with the mind of Christ? Now, listen, it's not a joking matter. For you to be in the class, and somebody is talking, and the people can understand what you are saying, and any time you enter the class, you are failing, and the sinner is over you. Something is wrong somewhere. The sinner is going forward in the office, and you say they are victimizing you, they are persecuting you. No, you are not putting your mind to use. I pray from today you put your mind to use. Amen. And the things that are lacking in the office, you'll be the one to provide the solution. Amen. If you believe it, your amen will show it. Amen. If you believe it, you will power your amen. amen. 
What is creativity? Creativity is a wild mind sponsored by a disciplined eye. Creativity is a wild mind sponsored by a disciplined eye. It is a wild mind sponsored by a disciplined eye. You are looking, you are seeing, and your mind is running wild. What will come out of what I've seen? Isaac Newton saw apple drop. And everybody will see an apple drop, but he asked something. Why is it that this apple did not suspend in the air? Then he came up with the law of gravity. Albert Einstein saw himself riding on the beams of light and he came up with the law of relativity. Everybody is seeing what you are seeing, but your mind is saying something else. That's the kind of creativity we are talking about. It's not just producing a product, but your mind running wild to produce something that the world has never known and the world has never seen. And that will be your testimony in Jesus' precious name. I said, and that will be your testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Creativity is breaking out of the established patterns in order to look at things in a different way. Creativity is breaking out of established patterns in order to look at things in a different way. Creativity is breaking out of established patterns in order to look at things in a different way. Prior to this time, all home sales are usually done on Sundays all over the world. It's Sundays, Sundays. Then God's servant broke out of the norm. And for the first time, home sale was established on Tuesday. The established pattern was broken through creativity. And Tuesday began to work. Prior to this time, most preachers, most believers did not believe that home sale would be effective if you do it on any day outside of Sunday. Now, the creativity hit the man that God has given the vision, Papa, and all of a sudden, a short Tuesday as the best day. And now, people are beginning to change from Sunday to Saturday. Some are even doing it on Wednesday. Now, creative people don't look at other people's, other people's look. They see what other people don't, don't see. When they look, they see beyond what other people see. May you be like that kind of person in Jesus' name. I say, may you be that kind of person in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, your amen will show it. Amen. Creativity is bringing into existence something new and valuable. It is bringing into existence something new and valuable. It is bringing into existence something new and valuable. It is creativity that separates the good from the great and the ordinary from the excellent. It is creativity that separates the good from the great and the ordinary from the excellent. Now, what is innovation? I said it's creativity that separates the good from the great and the ordinary from the excellent. What is innovation? Innovation is simply inspiration put into action. Innovation is simply inspiration put into action. It's inspiration put into action. Innovation is also modernization of originality. Innovation is the modernization of originality. Somebody has invented a thing, you are taking it to the next level. Michael Varate invented electricity. Thomas Edison brought it to the house by inventing the incandescent light bulb. 
Michael Faraday invented the electricity outside. Thomas Edison brought it to the house. It's my prayer that even if you are not creative, you will be innovative in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, qualities quickly of creative and innovative people. Qualities of creative and innovative people. So many people are very creative. Some of them are no longer creative again after they were creative once. They are not hearing them again. They have gone into the oblivion like missing elephants in the bush. Some people are creative. All of a sudden, they started nose diving. Some are creative, and then they are going forward. We will know the reasons why some are creative and no longer creative. Some are not creative at all. Some who were there before are no longer there again. And why some are there and are still there. Who we'll know some of their qualities. The reason why they are like that. The first one is this. All creative and innovative people must have a drawing board review. Please take note. All creative and innovative people must have a drawing board review of their products, performances, patronage, style, and feedback from their clients. Don't worry, I will go over it. All creative and innovative people must have a drawing board review of their products, performances, patronage, style, and feedback from their customers. To refuse to respond to customers' complaints and feedback will take you to the back, God forbid. Many are creative. By virtue of their creation, things are working for them. All of a sudden, people no longer mean anything to them. And the truth about life is this. If you are a creative businessman, you have customer base that is growing by the day. Please take note. Those customers are the only ones that can fire you. No other person has a business owner can fire you. Only the customers can fire you. The only thing they will do is to take their money and go and spend it somewhere else. And you will be running out of business. Sam Walton said, the customer is the only person that has the ability to fire the CEO. All we need to do is to spend the money somewhere else. Now, why we are saying this is because, you see, people have gone to the pinnacle of their career as creative people, and all of a sudden they find themselves in the pit. The reason being that they no longer visit the drawing board to find out why they are doing what they are doing, if it is correct or not. So at the end of the day, they get themselves to be blamed. How many of you have used Nokia before? Or you are still using it now? Okay. <laughs> Do you ask why Nokia is not that popular and Apple phone has taken over? Is this problem? How many of you were using Blackberry before? Are you still using it? Blackberry has been buried. <laughs> is this thing? Their BBM, Blackberry Messenger, was, is like what we call WhatsApp. Two of us. <laughs> it was everywhere. Everybody wanted Blackberry. If you don't have Blackberry, it's like you are old school. But today, if you have Blackberry, it's like you are old school. <laughs> this is the problem. Creative, but not going back to the drawing board. Customers started complaining when they came, when phones started coming, Apple came up, Apple was the first phone that came up with touch screen. When phones came up with touch screen without a physical keyboard, their keyboard was tiny. You will be pressing it, pressing it as if you are going to fight. You will be pressing it, pressing it. You need microscope to even see it. You will be pressing it and struggling and struggling and customers were complaining that this thing is not helpful. And then they refuse to change. They remain dogmatic and before long, 2017, Blackberry was buried. <laughs> hey. In those days, Papa used to send me to go to a radio station. We were doing 
a program with them, Destiny Moldy Hour. Every three weeks, they will go off air. And when they go off air, they will go off air like one month, two months, three months. They were the only radio station in this part, this south, southern part. When you tell them, ah, why are you always going out? They will say, they are numero uno. <laughs> you don't know the meaning? It means they are the best. They are the first. They are the most important. It's a Latin word, numero uno. It's a Latin word. That's what they will tell you. That's what they call themselves. Numero uno. <laughs> I will tell them, one day, they will not know you people again as numero uno. <laughs> they thought it was a joke. We were running a program. They will fail the program. If you see the transmitter, the transmitter is as big as, only God knows. The whole of this company is transmitter. Transmitter that they carry like Stabilizer and keep in one place. The whole of that transmitter is due all of this compound put together to the clothes everywhere. This transmitter. I will tell them that you people are doing old school. You will soon be phased out. They thought it was a joke. And all of a sudden, while they were off air, two radio stations came out and did their test run. Everybody turned to them. Today, they don't even know them that they are existing. Numero uno. Your business may be numero uno today. Your career may be numero uno today. You may even be numero uno today. But good news is this. If you joke with people's complaints, if you joke with people's assessment of what you are doing, and you don't go back to the drawing board, you will soon be out of market. God forbid. Did you hear what I said? You will soon be out of market. Please listen to me. No business is too big to fail. No business is too big. I've seen big banks crash to the ground. Just joking with customers and playing with people. Big banks crash to the ground. No business is too big to fail. No matter the base of that business. Asset base, capital base, is immaterial. You joke with one customer, it can cause you problems. A particular bank in this country, I won't call the name of the bank, had a problem with a particular businessman. Over 6,000 customers withdrew one day. They almost went on the ground. The MD had to go and beg the man kneeling on the ground. Please consider us. Six, because of that one man, 6,000 customers, over 6,000 left the bank. Big customers who left the bank, the bank almost closed the same day. Joke with one single person. Jesus Christ, when he came, he didn't play with one woman. So she brought the entire community. One woman brought the entire community. So if you also play with one customer, they can carry the entire community away. God forbid. That will not be your testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. So you must know. I was see a young girl was in church. I was talking to this girl. She's a fashion designer. She helped me to make one cloth one day. The cloth was very fine. But as I was wearing the cloth, eh, the cloth was tearing. <laughs> as if my body had razor blades. It was tearing. <laughs> Hi. I said, what kind of thing is this? She would take measurement. When they sew the cloth and bring it back, the cloth will be different from the measurement. They take. I say, ah. and they will take time to measure you, measure your hand here, measure your back here, measure your waist, measure your tie, measure you. Waiting. When you when you come back, the cloth will be tight as if you want to commit suicide. I say, what? I say, what is the meaning of all this? She will sew cloth. She will come again. The cloth will be uh, the, we, the cloth will be tight. The thing will be tearing. The people will be complaining everywhere. I not call that one that say, "Come, please, young girl, work on this thing, or else you'll be out of market." People's patience questions will run dry. After a while, she thought it was a joke. One small girl came from somewhere and collected all the customers. Oh, oh, it was it. Sightless collected all the customers with fantastic designs. Just be joking and think it's a play. Just be joking until somebody who is in the competitive, it's a competitive world now, somebody that is in the business with you opens across. <laughs> hey. Numero uno.
God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a particular airline that was being produced called Concord. <laughs> oh, some of the old people will know it. You know Concord? Uh -huh. It's no longer there. <laughs> That airline was very expensive, used by British Airways and Air France. There were the only two people that could afford it, the British Airways and Air France. And they were telling them to, because they are, the way they use the, gas, uh, the uh, uh, aviation fuel that they use, it consumes aviation fuel a lot and makes a lot of noise. But it's very good, very fast. They cross the Atlantic in four hours, very fast. But they were telling them to check their design and work on it. They refused until even British Airways got tired. Air France got tired, and they refused to buy them again. 2003, they went into oblivion. And we're not hearing Concord again. Nobody's using Concord again. That's an airline corporation. They, are, they were wealthy, very rich. But now, they are nobody, nobody's hearing them again. They are like missing elephants in the bush. It's not a laughing matter. It's a serious matter. Please hear this. Where flexibility ends is where productivity will end. Where flexibility ends is where productivity will end. Stubbornness and unwillingness to change is the energy of fools. Wiseman says stubbornness and unwillingness to change is the energy of fools. They are telling you the soup you are cooking is not good. You are still cooking that type of soup. When you cook the soup, the people will eat. You don't have public food. You will pack salt and see if you are decon salt. I don't know whether Dangote visited you. Pack all the salt and put inside the soup. <laughs> and you want the public to buy it. Please, people's taste boards are not complaining. You will pack salt. I will see people that pack salt. Cook food that is for general public. You are putting salt as if it's your personal food. Even if you like salt, won't you tell somebody to test? You are cooking a soup, you don't test. Then you cook coffee, brackish water, and come and give to people. <laughs> I was living with my older brother as a young boy. <laughs> There was this hotel that was very good. These people very good before. They were raining everywhere. They were selling good food. The moment the owner of the hotel died, they started selling archie soup, archie soup, archie soup, archie soup. Any day you go there, you see archie soup. Any day you go there, they plant old old women cooking archie soup, archie soup. After some time, the hotel died. Everything died. Only archie soup. <laughs> when you don't, when you don't sit down and go to the drawing board and analyze what is on ground. Listen to me, if you say you have a revelation of anything, and that revelation is not taking you up, it's bringing you down, it's not a revelation from God. Every revelation from God must align with Proverbs 4.18. Your path must shine brighter and brighter. Any decision, any policy, any revelation that is not in tandem with Proverbs 4.18 and Agai 2.9 is a demonic revelation. Any policy that is not in tandem with Proverbs 4, 18 and Agai 2, 9, it is not of God. Paul said, I went up by revelation, not I went down by revelation. Galatians chapter 2, verse 2. I went up by revelation, not I went down by revelation. So any policy, anything you are studying into your business as creativity that is not making that business to go forward, it is not of God. The acid test for a revelation of God is progress. If it is not progressing you, it's retrogressing you, it is not of God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number two, creative and innovative people embrace their difference. Creative and innovative people embrace their difference. They embrace their difference. Understanding and utilizing your difference make you enjoy preference. Understanding and utilizing your difference makes you enjoy preference. <laughs> Please don't train your monkeys in the desert. It will kill their potentials to some assault. 
Don't train your monkeys in the desert. It will kill their potentials to somersault. You do hear what I said? Don't train your fishes on the tree. It will kill their potentials to swim. <laughs> Many are forcing their lions to bark and forcing their dogs to roar. It will not work. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Every glory you see, say one star different from another star in glory. We all have hands. Some use left, some use right. Two of us. Some are very strong with the left, some are very strong with the right. If your own is left, be using it. If your own, you are very strong with the left. You write with the left very fast, be using it. Now, if you bring your certificate after the end of, nobody will ask you whether you got it with the left hand or with the right hand. It's not interest, nobody's interested. Look at your area of strength. That is where creativity flows. Did you hear what I said? Creativity flows in your area of strength, not in your area of weakness. Football jugglers are always thinking of how they are going to turn the ball. They are not thinking of how they are going to bounce the ball because they are not basketballers. Do you hear what I say? If you meet Ronaldo, you meet Messi, they are always thinking of how they will dribble. They are always thinking of how they will take shots. Long range. They are always thinking of how they are going to play sport kicks. That's what they are thinking of. They are not thinking of how they are going to bounce the ball because it is not their area of bouncing. That's for basketballers. They are not. Many of us are playing football expecting to live like basketballers. And so it's not going to work. Did you hear what I said? I pray God will give you understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now listen, when Papa came up and said that God told him that it should be transmitting, as we are doing service like this, it should transmit through the satellite. Or the, people they say, no, no, that's not the way it is done. That's not the way it is done. The way it is done, pastor must stand and preach. He said, no, this is what God told me. This is my own area. And while he was doing it, lockdown came. So it was not a problem. His own area is this area of transmission. Your own area can be people standing and talking. The most important thing is that the, cook, the soup is cooked and it is served the way it is served to everybody with the same quality. Yeah. Not diluted. The same quality. Harry Ford is producing moto. Elon Musk is producing moto. But the two are not the same. Harry Ford, Elon Musk, happens to be the richest man in the world today. Yes. It's the one that has the Tesla cars. You see Tesla car. Yes, Tesla car is the owner, the person that produces Tesla car. Now, his own is powered by electricity. And a Ford is powered by gasoline, what we popularly call fuel. Two of us, but two of them are producing cars. Look for your own peculiarity. Look for your own difference and flow there. That's where inspiration will be coming. Are you hearing me? Stop doing what everybody is doing. No, 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 no. Not everybody will do the same thing. Trade your difference. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Trade your what? Difference. Don't go to school and study something that the other person is studying. I saw a small, young boy like this. Some weeks, small boy like this. That boy is a walking calculator. Small boy. Measure any figure. Anything times this plus this plus this times this times this. The boy will just start like this, do like this. This is the answer. With your calculator in your hand, he will tell you the answer. If you tell him, uh, what is 2039, 7th of May? It will tell you it's a Thursday. Where is standing? Where is standing? Can you imagine that kind of boy going to study psychology? <laughs> hey! hey. Yeah, you. <laughs> That's what some of you are doing. That's why some of you are battling with the courses you are reading in school. You are studying, you are battling. You are battling because you are studying something you don't know. They say I should go and do uh, the admission for secretary administration. I said secretary administration. How will I read it? They used to do pitman shorthand. I hate that shorthand with passion. How will I read it? Because sometimes they will draw one thing light, draw another one down like this. They say the boy is coming. My own, even if you open book for me to cheat in the exam, I will still fail. If you open book to say I cheat, well, I don't know how to draw it. Now, I will draw it light like this. Remember, my own, if you draw from beginning, you draw my own, I will draw it heavy, then down, heavy again. Maybe my own is the boy is going. <laughs> I told them that never 
that reading this course will make me fail with distinction. <laughs> I will fail. It's not my area. There's nothing, no prayer point. I hated short hand. Hey, <laughs> Pitman short hand. I hated it. When I was teaching like this, as we enter class one like this, they say, Pitman short hand. I say, what is this one? They drag this one, drag and drag and like, some people like, some people they chew it. Wow, wow, wow. The pair is a hundred percent. Who would they get four over ten? Five over ten. I say, how can I be struggling with this thing? And then I go to read secretary at me where they're doing pit my short hand? Never. God forbid that is yet. <laughs> so please know your area of struggle. Know your area of what? Strength. Know your area of strength. Number three. Creative and innovative people are always open to new information. Creative and innovative people are always open to new information. Those who want plenty of hard currencies must be current with the information. Those who want plenty of hard currencies must be current with information. You must learn to update and upgrade your information bank. You must learn to update and to upgrade your information bank. Still knowledge will make you a nuisance. Still knowledge, old knowledge will make you a nuisance. <laughs> hey. Even God said in Revelation 21 verse 5, Behold, I make all things new. He said, right. That is right in new one. Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. Behold, I make all things new. Write. Write the new one, not the old one. <laughs> Write the new one. <laughs> Behold, I make all things new. Write. He said, if any man be a new Christian, that's the old side would say. He said, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Please let the old information that you have pass away too. I will never forget when primary 2, 1982, in school. Primary 2, oh. Hey. The headmistress was teaching us a song that only God knows that that song can never be that day's song. Raise your hands, so oh I, sons and daughters of our land, marching, singing, ha, ha, ha. Praise our governor general. Governor general in 1982 in Nigeria. <laughs> we are singing to praise governor general. The last governor general in Nigeria was James Robertson. And it was between 1955 to 1960. So now, in 1982, we are still praising our governor general. The woman was out of, out of life. She had out of life, complete. We are praising, praise our governor general, 1982. That's why you see a lot of doctors are having problems. Using what they teach them, 1979, that made him to graduate with the first class, to graduate, to come and teach people in this modern day, why won't he administer chloroquine injection to kill somebody? <laughs> you are laughing, it happened now, life, I saw it. You think I'm joking, it's not, a, it's not in Jacryo. I saw it where they administer chloroquine injection to give to a woman, and the woman died. Life, I'm telling you. So let me tell you the truth. If your information is old, upgrade it. Update it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Update it. Upgrade it. Stop saying it. Every day, before we are improving. Every day, life is improving. So stop and upgrade your information. Any doctor who says he studied medicine and did not upgrade his information and is killing people, studied medicine. <laughs> Rise to your feet. You are going to pray a simple prayer. He said, for we have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2.5. He said, there's a spirit in man. Pastor Allen used that scripture. But the, there's, a, there's a spirit in man, but the spirit of the Almighty give it him understanding. Job 32 verse 8. You place your hand on your head and you blow in tongues that the Holy Ghost will activate your mind and release creative ideas that will take you to the top. From where you are to where you ought to be. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Place your hand on your head and begin to pray. Pray in tongues. Pray in your understanding. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, le cos camradi a canafrano take le procrina tiada rekete prekete lugo lo pronieta e casco pretisco frandi cole prani on la kunge prenekete lus e shako te kerete ke predekedia e kanka kapradi o frono do dia de kani o le kanko preleke zazizo prenika sagila o kreno pre eno te kete kugu gupirayata e grombri de ganaro e la kunge ke preli ado frandia cole Brodia e sa zo ze gete prekete lu la data da barata rekete krekete lu gadaba o krene de gole predia da meso gariata en kan kan paradi o le knado e la kik radia lo kandi grekete rekete prekete lu diata thank you mighty god in jesus mighty name everyone whose hand is on his or her head i command in the name of Joseph of nazareth you will begin to have fresh ideas that will shake the world in the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord will inspire you in a landmark way. In the name of Jesus, it is done in Jesus' name.